Thank you, God. I say yes. We say Baby, yes tonight. I say yes. Oh, eternal and gracious, most loving God. We bow before you tonight. Thanking you for your goodness in our lives. Thanking you that you are God all by yourself. Giving you worship, praise, adoration, thanksgiving. As we come into your presence, God, we recognize that you are God all by yourself. And we come before you saying yes. We say yes to your will and yes to your way. As we understand that you are creator and king. That you are sovereign and eternal, God. That there is no one else but you that is worthy of the praise and adoration take the glory lord for we do not want to have it for ourselves god if you're looking for someone oh god a vessel that you can use tonight we say you can use us take our hands and our feet oh god take all of us god as we present ourselves before you one more time we come lord god knowing that we are in need of a savior knowing and understanding that there is no other one that can make us over again. As we stand in your presence tonight, we are asking for grace and mercy on this new day. Asking God that you would wash us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, that you would create in us clean hearts, Lord, and renew the right spirit within us. We pray that you would wash us afresh in your blood. Lord God, have your way. As we, oh God, come before you, one more time, we ask that you would burn away sin and carnal weaknesses in us as we recognize that unholiness cannot dwell in your presence. We ask that you would plunge us under the blood, God. Oh, God, burn away anything that is not of you, God. The 17 works of the flesh, mighty God, destroy and dismantle it from our lives. As one more time, God, we ask that you would make us over again. Oh, God, where can we be if it wasn't for you? What is this life, ah, God, if it's not lived for you today, God? What if we neglect our assignment of speaking about you and singing about you, Lord? What would we be, mighty God, but vessels of this honor, God? But tonight, one more time, we avail ourselves to your service. 
knowing that you've called, oh mighty God, oh God, unsightly creatures, mighty God, and you have had mercy on, oh God, our lowest estate and saved us and called us your redeemed. One more time, we commit ourselves into your care as we ask that your Holy Spirit will come in and make us over again. Father, we aim to please you. God, we want to tell someone that you're coming again soon, God, that somebody that's out here that needs to know that Jesus is coming again, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would help us to proclaim the good news of the message of salvation tonight on this broadcast. Let somebody be built up. Let somebody be nourished. Let somebody be empowered in your word, God. Let your word be written on the tablets of our hearts, mighty God. As we look to you, the author and the finisher of all faith, we're asking God that you would indeed remember us. Oh God, remember those that are sick and suffering. Father, somebody has lost the love that they have. Somebody is grieving. Somebody is laying on a hospital bed, but still have one drop of hope in you. And you are Christ in us, the hope of glory. I pray that you would meet them more than half the way. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you would heal, that you would transform lives, mighty God, that you, mighty God, would look upon your children with mercy and with compassion tonight, mighty God. Remember all families at RLOM, remember our pastors and their family, every minister and servant, our evangelists and elders, mighty God, our deacons, mighty God, our ministers, precious Jesus. I pray even to the smallest child in our midst, God, at RLOM, God, watch over us, God, cover us under your blood, keep us safe from the hands of the wicked one, mighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We're asking God that you would have your own way in us. My God, may everything that we do bring honor and glory to your name. Remember mighty God, the body of Christ around the world. We pray for every pastor tonight. We pray for every bishop and apostle, every leader in the body of Christ tonight. We ask for mercy, God. We pray, mighty God, that you would have your way in us. God, those that have strayed away from your word, away from your mandates. We're praying for mercy tonight that you will save them and restore them back to the fold and right standing God. Father, we pray for this world that is dark and dismal God and falling apart. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that the people that you have called lights in a dark world will arise and shine for the light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. In the name of Jesus is risen upon us, God. Help us not to be fearful, mighty God, but to remember that you are with us. So God, take full control. As I decrease, I pray that you would take these lips of clay and use them for your honor and for your glory to proclaim your word tonight to your people. May somebody be lifted up and edified and built up. Let the devil be horrified, mighty God, but ultimately you be glorified and we give you praise as we say yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. In your sufficiency, yes, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. If you're looking for a man, Well, a pleasant, pleasant good evening to you out there in social media platform. Amen. We welcome you this evening to our Christian Education Hour. This is the voice of none other. I'm going to turn the music off now. Amen. Now that we are going to begin, amen, our live uh, Christian Education Hour. Um, we are so grateful. Oh, my goodness. These allergies have my eyes itching. Lord, have mercy. I feel like gravel is in there, but please forgive me. Amen. Hallelujah. I welcome you this evening to uh, our Christian Education Hour at RLOM. This is the voice of yours truly, God's bond servant. Amen. The ambassador, Pastor Dr. Wendy Mitchell. Amen. We welcome you to our live broadcast. We're streaming live on Facebook, on YouTube, and on our TikTok platforms. Amen. And we welcome you to the broadcast this evening. It's so good to be back with you on another uh, Tuesday 
afternoon or Tuesday evening. And we welcome you in whatever time zone that you're in. Uh, we ask that you simply share the broadcast. And if you have not yet subscribed to our channels, please do so as we continue to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus. And we ask that you help us to share the broadcast to somebody that may be going through, amen, a rough time, uh, uh, maybe somebody that needs to be encouraged in the Lord. Amen. So we are welcoming you this evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My deacon is here. Good evening to you, uh, Deacon Millwood. Bless your heart. Welcome, welcome, my son. Blessed to have you on board. My daughter, Kingston Watson, is here. She says, good night, my pastor. Yes, I say yes. Amen. And indeed, tonight we say yes to his will and to his way. Amen. She says, glory. Amen. Yes to your will and yes to your way. Yes, we say yes. And Deacon Millwood says, good night. God bless you all. Our, amen, our Lady Evans is here. She said, pleasant good night to everyone. And my sister girl all the way down in Tobago, Sister Heather Yates Trim says, amen. Good night, Pastor Wendy and the rest of the saints. And Deacon is saying the whole Millwood family is here. So good night and good evening to the Millwood family, Pastor Sasha, the babies, and Deacon Millwood. Amen. We welcome you on the inside today. Again, we are so grateful to be back with you on another, amen, uh, evening where we are giving the Lord glory. And let me just give a shout out to all of our friends over here on TikTok. Hi, LP Joint. Hi, LP. God bless you. Uh, user 5581. God bless you, Batman. God bless you. Uh, uh, S. Woody 1. God bless you, Ash. God bless you. Uh, N.A. Cowboy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Rose Carmel Thomas. God bless you. Rita Bell. Kathy Graham. Uh, D. Calhoun, Sunny, uh, Mommy, Jelena, Whitehead, Ella, and News. God bless you, and we welcome you. Thank you so very much, uh, Pastor Sasha. I know that one was amen. All of you, thank you for welcoming me back. I was out of town this weekend, had a wonderful time, amen, in the presence of the Lord. So even though I was absent from my home church, I was still in the presence of the Lord. Happy to report that two more people gave their lives to the Lord. Hallelujah. And we are so very grateful, amen, that the Lord Jesus is still in the saving business. And if you're here tonight and you are listening to the sound of my voice, before we leave this broadcast, as we get into a Christian education hour, please, I am begging you, please give your life to the Lord Jesus if you have not yet done so. So we're in the book of Revelation. And last week we were studying about the 144 that were sealed. Amen. And we saw that they had a heavenly priority, a heavenly presence, and a provision that was also heavenly, where the Lord Jesus decided that they shall hunger no more. God bless you, uh, uh, Dr. Moses John Roderick. God bless you, precious. Thank you for joining. Amen. And we bless God. Amen. That you're on the inside. Amen. And we saw that they shall hunger no more, neither shall they thirst anymore. And they won't have to worry about, amen, the heat of the sun, no more hunger, no more thirst, because this is the heavenly atmosphere, no more suffering, no more sorrow. As we look towards that time, amen, that we are uh, heading towards heaven, amen, and we're working to make our heavenly home, amen, uh, our final destination. We're trying to secure our uh, eternity, amen, in Christ. Um, we got a glimpse through the eyes of uh, the Apostle John, and he is here now showing us what he saw, amen, in the realms of the spirit of this new uh, uh, heavenly home that we would be going to. And uh, I, I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to the joys of heaven. I am. Um, you know, once in heaven, all of these things that we're crying about um, on earth, we will not have to uh, be worried about crying for those things. So tonight, as we're in the book of Revelation, we're going into chapter number eight, amen, of Revelation 8 chapter 8, and we'll be reading from verses 1 through 13. Amen. If you're with me, uh, let me welcome our co-pastor tonight. God bless you, Pastor E. You are a blessing to the body of Christ. 
and we are such uh, blessed folk at RLOM to have you on board. Thank you for joining us tonight. Revelation chapter 8, verses 1 through 13, and it reads, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there were given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees were burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire, was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood, and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters, and the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood, warm wood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them were darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of part of it, and the night likewise. Thirteen and last, this is where we pause. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpets of the three angels which are yet to sound. The reading of the Lord's word is already blessed. Amen. In chapter 7, we discovered a pause in the judgment of God. Amen. Uh, we saw, as we recalled last week, the 144,000 Jews were sealed, and a great multitude which no man could number was then seen before the throne that would... Uh, what we can describe as being robed in the righteousness of Christ. These are they, uh, the Bible described as the ones who had come out of great tribulation. Uh, they had washed their robes in the blood of the lamb. Now, if you remember, the lamb had taken the book, amen, from him that was seated on the throne that was sealed with seven seals. And in chapter six, um, we saw the story, as we discussed, of great horror and devastation as six of the seven seals were opened. Um, moving now into chapter 8 of the book of Revelation, in case you're wondering where we're at and you're joining Moses Ka Kiai. God bless you, Malik. Thank you for joining. We welcome you. Please share the broadcast as you come in, just in case someone might want to know about the Lord. Um Tonight, we're dealing with the first four of the trumpets as we consider this great big silence that happened before the trumpet sounded. The pause in judgment had actually ended as heaven was now making a final preparation for God's judgment to resume. I want us to notice a few things now in this book of Revelation. Amen. There was silence involved here at this particular moment. 
And when he had opened, the Bible says, he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. And up until this point, we were able to um, see, according to John's vision, uh, we had witnessed technically in our imagination as we are looking through the eyes of John. We've witnessed the praise of the redeemed being offered before the Lamb of God. The four beasts are crying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Heaven is literally overwhelmed with the sounds of praise and honor that was given up to the king. But then now this is an unusual, literal, almost eerie scene that is now unfolding when heaven now becomes quiet. Ah, my other son is, is here. God bless you, Pastor Myron. God bless you all the way up in Dangerfield, Texas. We welcome you this evening, son. Hope that all is well with you. So the four beasts uh, 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 and all of the angels and this great assembly in heaven is now going quiet. There is no praise that is offered up. There is no words uttered, just complete silence. And what we must now uh, imagine in our mind's eye as we're looking at John's teaching, we are witnessing literally the final moments of the eye of the storm. Remember, there was a storm and then there was worship. Uh, and now we're going back out now, but because those upon the earth may have felt as if the storm had passed, but heaven now stands in complete silence of the power and the very presence of God. Their silence now is in recognition of the fact that God's judgment is about to resume. And if it's one thing that we know about the God of heaven that we serve, the true and the living God, is that he is a just God. He's a God of judgment and equity. Yes, he's merciful. Yes, he's kind. Yes, he's faithful. Those are all parts of his uh, very essence. But he's also a God of judgment. So they know that something is about to happen. And here we see the servants uh, involved. The seven angels which stood before God and to whom were given seven trumpets. There are seven angels that are standing before the throne now, to whom each is given a trumpet. And these created angelic beings are preparing to carry out now the sovereign will of God in judgment. Now, now John well understood the significance of the trumpets among the Jews. Trumpets uh, back in the day were blown in various ways to, to uh, send rather uh, specific messages. Number one, the sound of a trumpet uh, was used in time past uh, to call the people to a to an assembly. Uh, the trumpet was also used to, um, to let the people know that they were about to break camp and move on. A call of a trumpet was also used to alert to battle. It was a battle cry. And also the call of a trumpet was used to proclaim victory or to announce a warning. So, so Israel is literally here already familiar Glory to God. Thank you, uh, my helper for tonight, Sister Heather Yates Shrim. We're in Revelation chapter 8, verses 1 through 13. So Israel is familiar. The saints of God um, are familiar with the sound of a trumpet. They know what trumpet, when, when the sound of a trumpet is blown, they understand that something is about to happen. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. And I want us to you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to share this on um, on the Facebook and YouTube format so we can see. So these angels are about now to sound their trumpet and they're announcing a warning to the earth that there is impending judgment that is about to take place. Now, what a dreadful time that awaits the people that will hear those trumpets sounding. I'm glad that, you know, before all of that happens that we can hear the trump sound that is prior to, excuse me, Jesus calling for the church, taking us out before this awful tribulation judgment begins. So here we are seeing now um, another angel now comes and stands at the altar having a golden censer. We are now in verses three and four on Revelation chapter eight. Amen. 
and it says, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hands. Now, here is another angel standing before the altar of God, having this golden censer filled with incense to make an offering unto God along with the prayers of God's people. Let me remind us about this. No prayer that we have prayed, it doesn't matter whether it was from our childhood up until now, no prayer is ever wasted. God hears our prayers. He hears us. He answers us. Sometimes we might not want the answer that he gives to us, but he hears us. Amen. So, let, um, you know, the prayers that are offered from a pure heart in faith is never done in vain. God hears us. He is mindful of the prayers of his people. And remember, when we read in chapter 6, I believe, and uh, around verse 9, it spoke to us about when the fifth seal was open and under the altar, the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. So I'm also of the belief that this includes the saints of God uh, the prayers, rather, of the saints of God through the ages, down through the ages, those who have prayed for God's kingdom to come and that his will be done. Consider the prayers that would have been offered um, throughout time because of sin on the earth, because of the persecution. And what is happening now is that God, the Almighty, is about to answer each of these prayers that were prayed in power and in judgment upon the evil this evil world that John is foreseeing in his vision. I hope that we can see this. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Can you imagine the prayers of the martyrs who were burned at the stake, who were crucified, who were unalived, amen, who were eaten by wild beasts or whatever method of torture that happened to them, whatever means that they had left this world while being persecuted, all of those prayers will now be answered by God as he vindicates his name and he causes, amen, punishment for the injustice that took place of his people. All of these prayers are now going up by that angel that had the censer in his hand. Amen. And, and, and know this, the, the Lord Jesus is hated and rejected even in our day, as well as those who follow him. We serve a God of mercy, yes, and a lot of people do not want to talk about the judgment uh, side of our God. They don't want to talk about that God that, you know, would judge with equity, but he will judge the injustice of men and this world system. And so he is here now, and the angel takes the censer, fills it with the fire of the altar, and he casts it into the earth and there were voices and thunderings and lightning and an earthquake watch this the angel removed the censer filled it with the fire through uh threw it onto the earth um with that you hear voices thunderings lightnings and earthquakes signaling that divine wrath is about to commence again now mankind has stood in open defiance of god all these times, throughout the years, even until now. Thank you, Trinity. Welcome, darling. Amen. Glory to God. Um, man has stood in defiance. They have rejected the saving grace of the Lord that was offered, amen, through the sacrifice of his only begotten son. Remember, John chapter 3 and verse 16 tells us, for God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Yet with this great move of God, with this great love that God has shown to us words, man has still stood in defiance, rejecting, amen, the grace that he has offered. Uh, but their rejection will bring about the final ending of their sin. God will stand, hallelujah, 
for the rejecting of his word in the form of his begotten son. He's not going to take it anymore. He's going to say, listen, I've extended grace and mercy and now judgment has come and there is no more mercy that is left upon the earth except absolute judgment. This is, this is not going to be a very nice scene, but we must understand that we have a choice. We are the only creatures that God has given the gift of choice. We can choose to receive the gift of salvation. We can choose to receive God or not. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We can choose or not as to whether we want to live for God. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Pastor Fred Jackson. Amen. Welcome, sister, sister. Amen. We can choose to live for God. We can choose to walk with, with God or to reject him. Amen. And so let's now look at the coming judgment because we will know for a fact, amen, that God will judge the wicked. Amen. As we are now looking at these trumpets, they are literally trumpets of desolation and destruction, trumpets of devastation upon the earth. Amen. And these seven angels stand prepared to blow. As each trumpet is blown, a phase, another phase of judgment is taking place upon the earth. Let's, let's, let's dig a little bit deeper. Yeah. Uh, the first trumpet sounded and then we had uh, hail and fire mingled with blood. And then these, the hail and fire mingled with blood was cast upon the earth and the third part of trees were burnt up and all green grass was burnt up. So now what we're seeing now is a very dry, desolate uh, um, uh, earth. This trumpet brings what appears to be a great hailstorm that's mingled with blood and fire and brimstone as much as all the, ve the green vegetation is consumed. More than likely, the blood quite possibly could be that of men and animals that died during the storm, or it may simply be uh, contaminated water droplets that have the appearance of blood. But whatever the case is, this judgment will be severe. If we go to the book of Ezekiel, because Ezekiel prophesied this, whether you understand, let's prove it in scripture. We don't want to guess at anything. Go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 38, and verse 22. And Lady Evans is saying, yes, it will be a choice as it is now. It is a choice. We have a choice to serve God or not. Amen. Ezekiel 38 and 22. Amen. Glory to God. And it says, Ezekiel prophesied of this in chapter 38 of Ezekiel. And he says, and I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood. And I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him an overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Now, when you look at this, that alone is devastation enough. But when you stop to think that one third of the trees and all the green grass are burnt up, consider the effects as oxygen levels plummet due to the veg vegetation being destroyed. Remember that we need the green trees because we get oxygen from the trees, yeah? Consider the fruit trees that are um, no longer going to bring forth any fruits, yeah? No no more oranges or grapes, um, no more uh, uh, mangoes. Glory to God. Consider the fruit trees. They're no longer bringing a harvest and all of the green pastures and the... the, the um, the hay crops for our sheep and goat, our livestock, all of that is gone. So in other words, what we're seeing here, remember last week we spoke about the, 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 the world's food supply will suffer. But this is even great. Let me put it this way as a West Indian. This is even greater sufferation. Yeah. The famine and the hunger that was described back in Revelation chapter 6 is only going to worsen more. So, so that was pure devastation from that first trumpet. But now look at the second angel. Remember we said each trumpet is signaling a different destruction, a different plague being poured out upon the earth. Verse 8 to 9, And the second angel sounded, 
and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. And the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. Watch this. As the second trumpet sounds, a great mountain burning with fire falls into the sea. This could be possibly a large meteor or asteroid falling upon the earth, or as well, it may be, uh, this says a great mountain burning with fire. It could be maybe a great vulca a volcanic eruption from a mountain that was burning with fire. Amen? Uh, but with this thing that is now dumped into the sea, uh, a third of the marine life will die and the ocean will be filled with blood and rotting flesh, causing widespread contamination. One third of the ocean vessels are destroyed, possibly likely from a massive tsunami caused by this enormous impact. We now must recognize that this is a total destruction and devastation. On the land which most of the trees and all grass have been devastated and now we're having much of the ocean is being destroyed and and we're talking now about John's vision in Revelation what was revealed to him while he was on the Isle of Patmos John was transported up by the spirit into heaven and he is seeing all of this in retrospect prophetically through a prophetic vision of what is coming on the earth Shipping lanes and fishing boats will be greatly hindered. The life that the ocean normally sustains through its resources will be greatly reduced. Now we're looking now at uh, hunger and economic effects of these two trumpets and the, the pouring out of, uh, well, we can say the curses will be overwhelming. Consider now that both of these trumpets involved blood. Because man has rejected the redemptive blood of Christ. And now God brings blood, the blood of condemnation. Yeah. Yeah. We've rejected literally the blood of Jesus Christ. We don't want, amen, to receive the blood that can redeem us. We, we've rejected the Lord Jesus. We don't want to hear about him. We don't want to hear anything about being a Christian, about giving your life. We don't want to talk about Calvary. We, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's just crazy um, the way that the world has now become. That a world that is filled with millions of people are fighting against this one story of how a Savior came and died to save mankind. Now, the third trumpet, we call this uh, maybe... Um, so we had devastation, destruction. This is de um, uh, desperation now. The earth is now becoming a desperate place in verses 10 and 12 of Revelation chapter 8. And it says, And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called worm wood and the third part of the waters became worm wood and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter so what we're seeing now um the first two are horrifying but the judgment does not stop there remember there are seven angels with seven trumpets and each trumpet that is being blown is causing something to happen on the earth it's causing and releasing a plague. Imagine. The first two were absolutely horrifying. But the trumpets continues to blow. So the third trumpet now brings this star that falls from heaven. But it's falling specifically, if you notice, upon the rivers and the fountains of water, of fresh water, causing them to become poisoned my god wormwood literally means bitter so one third of the world's drinking water is going to become contaminated and causing mass death right now there are probably about 50 countries 
worldwide, yeah, uh, that doesn't have access to safe drinking water. And that translates into probably about, um, roughly about 1 billion people. If we are already facing a crisis of having 1 billion people in the world today that do not have access to safe drinking water, consider the effects of this trumpet, trumpet added to that. Because when that trumpet is blown, that third trumpet brings about the falling of a star called Wormwood that would cause, amen, many to be poisoned because the waters that the star is going to fall into is going to be turned bitter. Welcome, uh, Dudu. God bless you. Amen. Can we imagine that? We're and funny enough, you know, just uh, uh, today I was looking at something on social media and it showed uh, a, a, a missionary group that's uh, going into the Congo. They've been going there and taking in. And you could see the water. They showed you that there was a lack of proper drinking water because everything was contaminated. And these kids had all of these sores on their bodies and even washing their clothes in the contaminated water to put it back on their bodies made all of these sores really uh, just get festered. And so we, we already see that need right now. There are places right now on this earth that do not have access to drinking water, as simple as it may seem. We must now pray that the Lord would send help to those places, amen, and provide proper drinking water, amen? And the trumpet of darkness is coming. So that was the third trumpet. But now here is the fourth angel. These angels are standing before the one that's seated on the throne, ready to carry out, amen, the instructions. And it says the fourth angel sounded, excuse me, and the third part of the sun was smitten and the third part of the moon and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them were darkened and the day shone not for a third part of it and the night likewise. So when the fourth angel sounds his trumpet, the heavens will be dimmed. Oh, we just literally, you know, witnessed uh, an eclipse. And while there are, other, there are people out here that are saying that we're literally, you know, there's conspiracy theorists and other people that are saying that there's a fake sun that's shining right now and our world is actually in three days of darkness because they, they the powers that be, NASA, whomever, um, are trying to block out this, the real sun that's happening. There was a lot of crazy stuff that we saw at the eclipse. Yeah, they said that the moon um, literally passed in front of the earth or covered the earth. And those people who were recording uh, saw the moon go behind, move and go behind the sun, which is totally ridiculous. That cannot happen. Yeah. So whether it be so or not, here we have um, a story of John now saying that the fourth angel sounds and the heavens will be dimmed. One third of the light given from the sun, moon, and stars will no longer shine upon the earth. And there's uh, people that are saying since the eclipse has happened, um, no one has seen the moon. I don't know how true that is. I got to go outside and check to see if I can see the moon tonight. Yeah. Um, but whatever it may be, John is seeing prophetically through a prophetic vision of stuff that is going, going to happen. Yeah. Can you imagine a world where the sun is not shining? where the moon and the stars are no longer shining. One third of the light will be gone. Consider daylight being reduced by one third, creating the longest night that we've ever known. It will also be the darkest night with the moon and the stars affected. And this will in no doubt affect climate, growing seasons, uh, temperatures and weather patterns. Because, you know, we operate by, you know, the pull of the moon, some people say. It, it, it affects our climate, it affects our, um, our, our uh, seas and, and the seasons and temperatures and weather patterns overall. So consider now the emotional effect 
that this will have upon the people who are here on the earth are plunged into darkness. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Consider that. Matthew 24 and 29 says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Man has never yet felt the wrath of God as he will during the tribulations. We have got to make sure during the tribulation, no S, amen. We've got to make sure that we have uh, made our calling and our election sure because there is more to come even after this utter darkness, amen. And I beheld an angel flying through the midst of the air saying with a loud voice, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels with a, which are yet to sound. Now four trumpets have already sounded, but John now hears another angel proclaiming that the judgment is not over yet, even though it was harsh already from the four angels that have already sounded their trumpet. Here is an angel now presenting Amen. A testimony. The angels fly, the angel flies through the heaven declaring a warning. There are three woes yet to come, three trumpets that are still remaining. And these have already sounded were bad, but things are only going to get worse as the tribulation continues. Oh my God. I it, you know it's it's sad for us to think about these things happening, but it's gonna come. And we now who are here, we must not be ignorant of what is happening. God bless you, Susie Q, my baby. Amen. It's all right, baby. I'm glad that you're here. Even Don't worry about the lateness. Hallelujah. Welcome, darling. Amen. My daughter is in Canada and she's joining us tonight. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, these woes, woes, W-O-E, I like to, when I read woe in the Bible, I put my own spin on it, and I say war simply means the wrath of Elohim, yeah? These woes were sounded for the inhabitants of the earth, the people that were dwelling on the earth. And we've studied these before and found that they were those who had built their lives upon the earth. They, they were the ones that had sunk their roots into the systems of men, these people who had not secured their heavenly amen, uh, destination. The Bible says that we should, you know, store up treasures in heaven, not on earth. We should make sure that we make, have our lives fully grounded in God. These are those who have rejected the call and the mercy of God and are left to face his divine judgment. There will be no escape for those who must face the judgment of the Lord. I want us to recognize that. There is no Hollywood script. You know, this is not a Hollywood script. This is not a science fiction novel. The events that we're looking at tonight are soon coming to pass. Amen. Glory to Jesus. And we must now make sure that we make our calling and our election sure. We must look to Jesus, the author, and the finisher of our faith. Uh, you know, sometimes we come on and we are we are teaching about, you know, these things that are going to come. And a lot of people think that it sounds kind of crazy. It may sound crazy, but we're not here, amen, to give you anything that is not the truth of the word of God. And so we, we want to make sure that as we discuss these things, glory to God, that we make sure that we give you what the word of God says. So there's no doubt in your mind that whatever we are discussing tonight, amen, is coming from the word of God. And I believe going forward, this is when, you know, uh, we will see the wrath of God being poured out on the earth. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, and so this concludes uh, the end of, of this, you know, and we, we must make sure <laughs> my God, 
we must make sure that we receive the Lord Jesus Christ. We come and we talk about these things and we, we want to make sure that whoever, amen. God bless you, uh, Pastor Chambers. Bless your heart, darling. Bless your heart, sister. It's good to have you on board. So let's go now into the book of Revelation chapter nine. Amen. As we, we just saw, we just saw one angel, glory to God, uh, King James Version. Hallelujah. Uh, da, 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 da. Hallelujah. Let's go to the King James Version. I like to make sure that I stay in the KJV. Amen. Glory to God. We're in the book of Revelation chapter 9. Glory, 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 glory. Amen. Man, they have so many versions of the Bible out here. They were trying to get us all confused. My goodness. I just simply want, you know, just the King James Version. Oh, Jesus. All right, we can go with the New King James Version. That's all right. So Revelation chapter 9, let's go there because we're studying now. Amen. This next judgment, remember, we, we, we ended on chapter 8 with the last angel uh, in the middle of uh, the tribulation. Four angels have already amen, uh, made their, their sound. They've already sounded. I, I think the, the, the Bible describes it as these angels that have sounded. They have sounded their, their trumpets. And we now must, the last angel that sounded was saying, whoa. So we're reading chapter nine from verse one. And it says, and the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven onto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts, my God. Locusts upon the land, we'll be reading till verse 12, upon the earth and upon and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man and in those days shall men seek death my god and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them and the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women. And their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many angels running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions. And there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name is the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollyon. One woe is past, and behold, there comes two woes more hereafter. Oh, boy. All right, let's get into the woes that have been described. Thank you, Steph, KG, for liking. Uh, we ask you again to please share the broadcast in whatever platform that you are. 
we're now in Revelation chapter 9, and we read from verses 1 through 12. This is the time we've read about the first remaining uh, three trumpets, and they were very disturbing to me as I, I, you know, I like to read. And let me just say this. A lot of people don't like to read uh, the book of Revelation, but it is imperative that we read it, that we know what is going on. And I believe Revelation is simply just that, a revelation of what is to come. So don't be afraid to dig into the word of God. Yeah. Um, and so the, the word of God now has allowed us a glimpse of what the world would endure as the forces of hell unleash an attack on mankind. And let me say this, notice that hell cannot come against mankind unless God allows it. Many people today refuse to accept the existence of a literal hell. Uh, we don't like to talk about hell. The minute that we talk about hell, everybody is confused. Everybody is saying that we're, we're doing, you know, uh, speech that does not, uh, that, that condones all sorts of crazy stuff. And, and, and hell is spoken very casually in our conversation, you know, and many people make jokes about the party in hell. A lot of people make jokes about that. Listen, if I don't tell you anything else today, that does not stick with you. Hear me and hear me well. Hell is very real. And in the place of call hell, it's not going to be a party. For the people who are condemned to endure the eternal torment in hell, it's not going to be a party. I've had visions about hell. Glory to God. God's power is what is restraining the forces on hell. In hell. But in the tribulation, God is going to remove that restraint. And he has given the enemy and the inhabitants of hell, these creatures that were just described, they've been given power. And literally that time is going to be a time when hell is released on earth. When all of hell is loose on earth. Here we have the enemy himself being revealed. Right now, you know, the enemy comes at us. The devil comes at us in, in various forms, even as children of God. Yeah, he comes at us. But yet he is restrained. He can, Sefke, he can only go so far as far as God allows him to go. But consider this, the Bible says, and I saw a star fall from heaven onto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. So here we find another star that falls from heaven. Unlike the others that were celestial bodies of mass, this star is a literal person. And we believe him to be Lucifer himself. His name is Lucifer, which means brilliant star or shining one. What can we learn about him? The word fall is of great significance. Understand this. It means to descend from a higher place to a lower one or to be thrust down. This is now a verb in the perfect tense. Simply means meaning that an action has already happened, but the results and the consequences will remain. He has already fallen from a place of acceptance to a place of rejection and condemnation. Remember who he was. Don't you be ignorant of who this devil is. Don't be ignorant of who he is. My God. We want to make sure that we know who he is. He was a highly exalted archangel. But because of pride and vanity, he has sought to possess uh, the throne of God. And it was that same pride that caused God to cast him out of heaven. We can look at several scriptures and see what it says. Can we, can we find that in scripture? I want us to make sure that we look in the, the word of God and that we, we know uh, what we want to uh, find. Isaiah chapter 14 and verses 12 to 15 says, Let's see how you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. 
how you were cut down to the ground. You are you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farther sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. Did we get that? That was the book of Isaiah, chapter 14. If you're thinking that Lucifer is not in the, the scriptures, yes, he is. We can find that fall in scripture. Amen. Let's also go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28, and verses uh, 13 to 19. Ezekiel, chapter 28. Glory to Jesus. Want to make sure that we see it. And it says, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tambrets and of thy pipes were prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that cover it, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee by the multitude of thy merchandise. They have filled the midst of thee with violence and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. And I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Oh boy. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thy iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. And they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. So what we're seeing here is that Satan was described as the prince of the power of the air. And he now is being described as the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. My God. Can we look at this now? My God. Pride. Oh, Jesus. Pride goeth before a fall. It was pride that brought him to where he was. And we see pride operating in men. Look at, look at us. The minute that we find or think that we're kind of cute or beautiful look at and and you know it's funny that i see a lot of people and, and you know to each his own whoever wants to go and beautify themselves in whatever way whether it's by exercise or nip and tuck hey i can't tell you what to do i know that i was created in his image and in his likeness so i don't need to want to look like kim kardashian i don't want a nose like anyone i don't want lips like anyone i'm good just the way i'm created but if you notice, there are a lot of people that have been, amen, uh, going to get themselves uh, worked on. <clears throat> Glory to God. Thank you for following me, break of day. Bless you. And I invite each of you to follow me. Amen. Glory to God. Um, but the minute that they do it, whether they nip and tuck or, or take a, whatever uh, uh, surgeries that they might want to, a spirit of pride comes over them. They begin to walk around 
haughty, you know, they've acquired a Coca-Cola bottle shape or whatever it is. And even within the body of Christ, we're seeing people filled with pride. I don't know if you saw this video just recently with a pastor that totally humiliated a member of his flock um, because she did not speak proper English and she came up to give a testimony of a degree, a law degree that um, she might have acquired. And he just literally obliterated her in social media presence, in the presence of millions or thousands of people worldwide. He literally embarrassed her. And I don't know what would make a servant of God, a man of God, a pastor. This was her pastor that destroyed whatever she was saying by publicly taking a mic, interrupting her on live streaming, television, social media platforms or whatever, and told her that her testimony was a lie and she should sit down. I, I, I can't begin to tell you how devastated I was in looking at this servant of God, literally embarrassing a sheep, a child of God, a woman, a man. It was narcissistic. It was terrible. It was unchristlike. It was unbecoming a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We do not belittle the sheep. We do not belittle anyone. We do not embarrass. We do not tear down. We are here to build up. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. We are here to encourage the people of God. Now, what if she might have, you know, become so depressed that she would want to go and unalive herself? What if that caused her to lose her mind and never want to be seen in a public forum again? And the sad part about it is that he needs to apologize publicly to the world, to the church, to the body of Christ. Because the truth be told, Pastor Myron, the young lady was speaking the truth. She did obtain a degree in law. But because she could not, she did not master the English language, what she was supposed to say as it pertains to the degree, he thought that she was lying. But that was not the way to do it. Jesus never came to condemn the world. And we must not operate as ministers of the gospel in a mode of condemnation. We must not do it. It is wrong. Praise the name of the Lord. And that only happened because of pride. So that tell me at that moment, pride filled his heart. And now we see Satan operating in the body of Christ with where many of our pastors and leaders and members are operating from a position of pride. The minute that we become famous, the minute that we become recognized, whether on social media or in our churches or with whatever we're doing or we're making a certain pay grade, pride steps in. This was what caused Satan to lose his place in heaven. But guess what? Now he's given authority and he is given the key to the bottomless pit. He is now given the authority to open and to loose the evil that God has bound within the pits of hell. Remember when Jesus went down, um, when he, when he, when he went down into the grave, his spirit now went down into hell and he loosed and set captivity captive. He rose with the keys of death, hell, and the grave. But now what John is seeing in the tribulation is that Satan is now given the key back to go now and to loose my God. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 
He's given the authority to open and loose the evil that God had bound within the pits of hell. Jesus has the keys of hell and death. Satan was dealt a mortal blow as the events of Calvary unfolded. We're now coming out of the resurrection season and we're going into, amen, glory to God, the season where we celebrate when the power came at Pentecost. Now, yes, Jesus paid the ransom for sin and he rose victorious over death and hell. And Satan no longer possesses the keys of hell or has any authority over it. Amen. My God. Glory to Jesus. We must now say and understand that it is here. Satan is given authority. He's allowed the keys of hell for a very brief time. These events are not outside of the parameter of God's control. I want us to understand that. The Lord is the one that gives him the authority. The Lord will open the pit. He will allow the pit of hell to be open. But remember that the devil is God's devil. Oh my God, I just felt the Holy Ghost right there. Remember that the devil is God's devil. He always has and always will be under the authority of Jesus Christ, the God that we serve. So the very pit that Satan is allowed to open will one day be his eternal prison and he will be locked away to hinder the redeemed no more. But for this one moment, John is transported into the future with a prophetic vision of him seeing mighty God. Glory to God. Of him seeing what will happen in the tribulation. Glory to God. Pastor Myron is, says, is saying, a pastor told my wife that if she leaves out of the church, she would lose the baby she was carrying. He was overstepping his authority, but God made him apologize to her for what he said. The devil is a liar and the truth is not in him. And that utterance, amen, glory to God. See, see, see the pride thing? Uh, saints of God, please ask the Lord, please take pride away from me. Please, Lord God, take pride away from me. So look here now. The devil is given this authority. We're going forward. Amen. Let me see how much time that we have. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. So we have a few more. We have a few more moments together. Amen. As he opens now the bottomless pit. There arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Satan has now the authority to open up the bottomless pit. This pit is mentioned seven times in the book of Revelation. It is from this pit that demonic forces will be loose upon the earth. Saints of God, don't let anybody fool you. Hell is a real place. Let's, let's go even further. So the deep is unlocked. What is the depth of this pit? The Bible says the pit is bottomless. It's bottomless. This comes from the Greek word abusos. Amen. A-B-U-S-S-O-S, -S, from which we get our word abyss. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Uh, um, if we go to Luke 8 and uh, 31, it says, And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. This word, this is when uh, Jesus was casting uh, the, the, the desire of the legions of demons that possessed the maniac at Gadara in the book of Luke chapter 8. And he was going to send them back to the deep. But they asked him, please don't send us back to the bottomless pit. That's what this, was a, this word deep was talking about. Because clearly, if the demons dread being bound and put in the pit, you and I don't have no desire to be there. Can I just say this emphatically and with compassion to someone that may be looking on? Hell was not created for men. Yeah. Hell was not created for man. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. It was not created for you and I, darling. So please, 
make your calling and your election sure to make sure that you do not end up in hell. Amen. So let's, so number one, we know what we know about hell is that it is bottomless. There's no bottom there. Amen. And there, are, let's, let's go a little further into describing. And there arose a smoke out of the put, out of the pit and the smoke of, as the smoke of a great furnace. So when the pit was opened up, this bottomless pit, smoke arose out of it as if it was a great furnace. Amen. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist. And if I can say this, um, it doesn't take a rocket scientist for us to understand that where there's smoke, there's fire, right? Yeah. If you see smoke, then it must mean that there's fire. So if this smoke is coming up out of the pits of the bottomless pit, then there's definitely a place of fire. And, and, and when we talk about the, the, the Richmond Divies in uh, Mark 9 and 44, it describes the place where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And, and, and many people want to think, uh, have a modern view that there will be no literal fire in hell. But this is contrary to what the word of God says. Hell is real. It is a place of total torment and total separation and eternal condemnation for those who die in sin without Christ. It is called a Christless hell for a reason. And I can assure you that there are no unbelievers in hell. There will be. The rich man desired. He believed now. He wanted Lazarus to be sent to warn his five brothers. They are now left to face the reality of their rejection of Christ. Nobody's going to stumble into hell by accident. But the good news is that nobody has to go there. Today, the Bible says, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. You have a choice. You can, you can make heaven your home. You don't have to go to hell. Oh, my goodness. That's the good news that I'm here to tell you about. Nobody has to go to hell. You can escape this torment and separation of hell. And all you have to do is to receive the gift of salvation and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's crazy. It's, you know, I, I, I think as a... I think as a people overall, we like to, we like things that we have to pay for. We think that the more money that we pay for something, it would make the value, you know, of, of Lady Evans, I, I don't understand this because here's the good news, right? And a gift because that's what salvation is. Yeah. It's a gift from God saying, Hey, hello out there. I'm giving you this gift. I purchased your salvation. I paid for it with my blood on Calvary's cross. I did this for you. Come on. And I want you to have this gift and this free gift. You don't have to pay anything. I've already paid for it. So many a times we get skeptical as to when someone gives us a gift. Come on. We are wondering, well, well what, what do they want? What does she want? Yeah. What, what, what does she want? Why, why, why is he giving me a free gift? Because he loves you. As your creator, he loves you. And so nobody has to go to hell. That's the good news of the gospel. The Bible says that it's going to disrupt the very atmosphere. The smoke from the pit Remember, we are already looking at a loss of light that happened from the first four trumpets where one third of the lights will go out. But now here we have smoke coming from the bottomless pit and it's going to pollute the air and darken the sky and hinder the light of the sun. So this is darkness upon darkness. My God, this is... huh. I, 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 I don't have a problem in telling you I do not wish to be on the earth at that time. I really don't. The smoke from the pit will pollute the air. 
the pit of hell has not yet been opened, but its influence is strongly felt in today's world. Satan is hard at work to undermine the cause of Christ. He Listen, his aim, his job, his assignment. Don't, don't you think about it. Don't you forget this for a moment. The enemy's assignment is to kill, steal, and destroy. He's coming. He's, he doesn't want to be your friend. He'll come disguised as a friend. But he'll set you up. He wants to destroy your life, your home, your church family, your churches. Your jobs, he wants to destroy the generations to come. Understand this the enemy does not like us, he does not like God's creation. We are in a battle right now with the forces of hell. The Bible says in Ephesians 6 and 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Satan does not want to see God's creation. That's you and I. We, human beings, the one who God took the time out to create us in his image and in his likeness, do you recognize that you have taken the place of this angel that was once in heaven so beautiful and God has now called us to worship that was his assignment to worship God and he reflected the glory of God all of those gems and stones just reflected and radiated the light of God he was not the glory he was a reflector of the glory, but he wanted to be like the one that had the glory on him. He wanted, he says, I will ascend up and I will be like the most high. I'll go above his stars. My God, I'm going to go above his stars. But now that he's been cast out, he's coming now to destroy you. And he can never return to that place where he was cast out of in heaven. But you and I have the opportunity to go where he can never return to. And that's why he's mad. So he will raise up some stars on the earth. Look at them all around. And then one by one, he destroys them. You see what's happening to Puffy? Oh, he lifted up Puffy and Puffy lifted up others. And they were enjoying their, their fame and their recognition, and their money, and their popularity. Oh, come on now. They were enjoying it. That was the exaltation of the enemy. Yeah, he'll give you his type of glory. He will put you up on a pedestal. But look at where they're running now. What you and I did not know, and it's all being exposed now was the vile things that they had to do in order to get that money, in order to get that fame. They had to sell their souls to the devil. Come on, somebody. They had to sell their souls in order to get that fame and that recognition. They had to go and, and, and unalive children in sacrificial uh, acts that they did. They had to do all sorts of unnatural things. And according to the reports, all of it is on camera. And so they are bound now by the devil. They got incriminating evidence against them. They cannot speak. They are bound to do whatever it is. You know, funny enough, I saw this week, I saw Tina Turner. Not Tina Turner, um, Grace Jones. Famous singer Grace Jones. She's now in her 60s. And she still had to come and pay the piper. At about 65 or 64 years old, she still, she came back out performing half naked. Because she has to pay the piper. She signed on to it. And until you, unless you are delivered by the Lord Jesus Christ and walk away, give it all up for the sake of Christ. And your soul, if you are not delivered, the only thing, and death is not even going to deliver them because by then they belong to Satan. So that's eternal 
torment. Pastor Mary says, how can we neglect so great a salvation that was paid for by Christ? Let me tell you something. He'll raise you up. That devil would raise you up. He will put you on a pedestal. He'll give you platinum records. But at what price? The scripture declares, what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose your soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Many of them are out here. You're seeing them up there with no, number one hit records and millions and billions of dollars. Platinum records, gold records. What did they give in exchange for that? They had to give up something. Many of them unalive, their children and their parents and their family members to pay the price of the piper so that they can get a hit show on television or a hit record or be put on the greatest, uh, uh, um, you know, Super Bowl uh, halftime show. Oh, yeah, they pay the price. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Come on now. This is real. And the devil is coming back. You're going to have to pay the piper. Yeah. But understand this. That even while we're in this uh, fight against principalities and powers, we have spiritual wickedness in high places. There are people in high places in government and other places that are wicked, that are entertaining these things. Yeah, they are the ones that go off to, you know, the island with that boy Jeffrey. Yeah, going down there to have, in, to interfere with underage children and to unalive underage children. And they're making sure that, that they can get through customs and they did the wickedness in high places. Yes, it's happening in our world, just as the Bible told us it would happen, Lady Evans. The Bible told us, don't you be ignorant. While the blood of the innocent is running rampant upon the land. Why do you think that millions of babies have been unalived by planned the parenthood people and they? This country has been in, oh Lord, God, unaliving the blood, the blood, yes. They've been making those sacrifices by the blood of the innocent. It's not a joke. This is the wickedness in high places. These are the principalities and the rulers of the darkness of this world. And the enemy comes to want to hinder the gospel light. Second Corinthians 4 and 4 tells us, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. Understand this. The enemy don't want them to see. That's why we have to be on these platforms telling people, please come to Jesus. Understand that the enemy does not want you delivered. He wants your soul. Uh-huh. My God. He wants your soul. That's what he's coming after. Jesus said, don't fear those who kill the body. But that man is coming. That demon is coming after your soul. And don't stop for a minute and think that these things will make you happy. We've watched how many of them that are millionaires and billionaires destroy their own lives. Money does not bring you love or happiness. It doesn't. Believe me. That is only found in Jesus Christ. So there are skeptic, skeptics sorry, who deny uh, the literal existence of, of the enemy and his demonic forces also. Jesus, the disciples, and Paul, if you read your Bible, you would see that they all dealt with demons. It's a dark area of life that we like to avoid, but we have to teach you about it because it's real. Glory to God. 
Imagine the chaos and carnage if all the prisons in America would open their doors. Imagine if all of those who are in there, the thieves, the rapists, and everybody as the insane, what if all of them were released onto society without any protection from the police? This is exactly the picture here or the idea that you can see as the pits of hell is open and men stand before the forces of hell utterly defenseless in this vision of John at this onslaught of terror. And the Bible describes in chapter 9 and verse 3 of the smoke, the locusts now that have been released and given the power. Out of the smoke came what appears to be locusts, but these were not regular insects. Sister Hannah says, Lord of mercy, Lady Evan says, my God, my soul is too expensive. I cannot be for sale. Amen. Glory to God. A swarm of insects or locusts can overwhelm and devour an entire area in a short time. And they usually come in vast numbers. They cover everything. But these demons will behave as locusts. These are demons that are going to be unleashed. Oh, my God. Overwhelming and consuming all that they encounter. And the Bible says they will have power to sting a scorpions. And this is literally referring to a great pain and the fear that they will inflict upon their victims. This is what we describe as a demonic horde. And it was commanded. They were given a command by God that they should not hurt the grass, but only men which have not received the seal of God in their foreheads. And it says you, you cannot kill them. But the men who did not have the seal of God in their foreheads, he says, don't kill them, but they will be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when you are stung with a scorpion. So they're given instructions, yeah? There is a limit to what you can do. Just like when the devil attacked Job, he was given a limit. He said, look, you can only touch his body. You can only go this far. You can't do nothing. Don't take his life. You're not allowed, but you can inflict him. There is a limit to what they can do. Again, I believe even for the believer, as we study these literal uh, revelation of God in the book of Revelation, that in it, even though it sounds very dreadful, even though it sounds very, uh, what's the word I'm, I'm, talk, I'm trying to find here? very uh tormenting yeah uh lord have mercy <sighs> you know and you can actually uh appreciate i i think for me in retrospect as a believer i can read this and these are very disturbing uh these visions that John got were very disturbing. And even for us as the readers in, in, in this modern day that we're living in, um, but in it, I can draw comfort in knowing that God remains sovereign and in full control. Are we there? Amen. He remains sovereign and fully in control of even the devil and whatever he has unleashed upon the earth. They have a limit as to what they can do. They are restrained from harming the grass and the vegetation, and they are not to go out and destroy and consume the landscape, but mankind. In other words, they are sent to bring judgment on those who have rejected the Lord. They don't have the power to kill men, only to inflict great torture and pain. And this too has a period of time that it is allowed. This is only going to last for five months. So there will be five months of intense suffering with no death. Even in this time of chaos, God is sovereign and in complete control. And somebody saying, well, I thought God was loving and I thought God was kind and I thought God was merciful. Yes, God is and will always will be all of that and then some. But we must receive 
Amen. The salvation that he is and has procured for us through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. We have to remember. Pastor Myron says, uh, can you imagine a person trying to unalive themselves because of the torment, but then they still cannot die? My God. But God is in control. And to the believer, I, I don't want the believers to be scared because the hand of our God is upon our lives. And in those days, the Bible says, men shall seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. These demons that has been unleashed will accomplish their purpose. Men will not die at that time, but they will seek and want to. Yeah. The pain and the suffering will be so severe that men will desire to die to escape their misery. This will be impossible. But those who have rejected God are now left to face his judgment and will have no escape. Sadly, if they do, it would only bring about eternal suffering in hell. For those deaths have been delayed as God's wrath is poured out. Look, I, I can praise the Lord that I'm, I'm going to escape that. The blood of Jesus has cleansed me, and I am free from the judgment of sin. Saints of God, we have to get it together. We have to get it together. We must know at this time that our lives, you know, we must account for our lives for all eternity. And that's right, dude, it's very scary. And, 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 and one of the things that we know is that the word of God is not a lie. God is not a man that he should lie. No, no, no. He's not a man that he should lie. So we know that everything written in the word of God is going to come to pass. Yeah. So here we have now the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses. And, and, and John gives us a, a rather paints a very vivid picture of what these demonic forces will look like. You know, the other day we had this report on social media of uh, someone that said that they saw these creatures in the mall in Miami. These creatures that were like nine feet tall and they were going, they appeared out of nowhere and everybody started running. And then we, we saw the reports and the videos of over 30 something, I believe, police cars that came out in response to these calls that they were getting about these creatures that were walking through the mall. And they said that no one could find, uh, could take any pictures. For some reason, their cameras were not working. But here we have a vivid picture of John describing these creatures that were released in the tribulation. There were horses prepared for battle. So they appeared as strong horses ready to pursue the enemy. So you know how big that creature would be. And upon their heads, they had crowns. They are seen as wearing a victor's crown, which means they're completely conquering men. At the same time, bodies like horses, but faces like men. They are seen as intelligent beings. They are real personalities with real objectives. This is not an imagination. Then the Bible also goes on to say that they had hair like women. So this seemed to suggest that they probably had a, quote unquote, a seductive nature. They will seduce the unsuspecting victim prior to pain. Notice this, that Satan and sin usually appeal to flesh. Yeah? Just picture in your mind. And then they had, the Bible described them as teeth of lions. So they're going to be powerful and dominating creatures that are relentless in their pursuit. They're literally at a place where they're stalking their prey. So in other words, they're going after men. They will be unstoppable because they have blessed breastplates of iron. And there will be no way to overcome or defeat their attack. These will be completely insensitive to the pain and the torment they inflict. 
But uh, Revelation also describes that they have the sound of their wings. So it, it, it shows you now that there will be a swiftness of their coming and men's hearts will fill with fear at the sound of their arrival, but there will be no escape. Look here. And then they have now a tail that stings. My God is bad enough, you know, that they're taking time out. You know, they have teeth as a lion already, but they have a tail now that stings. And this will be their main objective to inflict great pain and suffering in allegiance to their king. Notice this now. They have a king. They have a king. This demonic army that is going to be released according to Revelation chapter 9 will be under the command of Satan, our arch enemy. His name here is listed in both Hebrew and Greek, reveals that all unbelievers, whether you're Jew or Gentile, will face the relentless attack of these demonic forces. Understand this, saints of God. This is not a Hollywood movie that we're talking about. We're talking about something that will be happening in the last day. Am I here to tell you as I close? Am I here to tell you about doom and gloom? No, we're literally, our objective here, um, as we started this study in the book of Revelation, is to make sure that we find things that are relevant in today's society, that we study this word of God, this book in particular, um, that the Lord has given to the church to know times and seasons and to also give us a glimpse into the future. So we come on this platform and the various platforms that we're streaming from, we come on to share the word of God to tell you that there's no need for you to be afraid. And many people are afraid to read this book of Revelation, but it's actually an insight into what is to come. It is God giving us a preview. We got the notification before it hit the press first. God is revealing what will come, what will happen. He's also giving us a chance for us to make our calling and our election show. He's saying to us, when you see certain signs coming, look up because I'm about to put in an appearance. Your redemption draweth nigh. Get your life right. Make sure that you are part of the redeemed. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What and how can you say that you are redeemed? The only way that you can do that is if you have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. If you have received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you have given your life to him if you have committed your life to him, if you have repented of your sins and says, I want to receive the Lord Jesus. The book of Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 tells us how to get this done. And I am also obligated to tell you that you are saved by grace through faith and not of yourself, lest any man should boast. It is not a work that you do. That's why when I make the call to salvation and I invite people to come to the Lord Jesus Christ, even after I do my teachings, when I invite you to come to the Lord, I say to you, don't, you don't have to change anything because the fact of the matter is our righteousness is like filthy rags. We cannot change and make ourselves good that would measure up to the standards of the holy God that we serve. So we must come to him and let him do the changes in us. We must come to him prepared to repent of the sins. For the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So I am no way better than you. 
The only difference with me is that I've already given my life to the Lord Jesus. I've given my heart, my body, my soul, my spirit into the care of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because I don't know what tomorrow would bring, but I know this. I do not intend to go to hell. That was not prepared for me. That place called hell was not prepared for me. And if it wasn't prepared for me, I don't want to go there. It's that simple. So while, while I am headed to eternity, I want to make sure that I am in right standing with the true and the living God. And so I now must bring it to your attention that there is a gift that Christ is offering to you. It's very simple. Thank you, Lady Evans. It's very simple. Christ died. He came to set us free. Free from what? Free from this eternal death and damnation that we inherited because of the sin of our forefather, Adam. So that by the time we were born, before we even had a chance to sin, we were already condemned. What a hopeless situation. My God. Yes. Hopeless. Absolutely hopeless. But God in his infinite love for humanity decided, according to John chapter 3 and verse 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish. Thank you, Reds. But have everlasting life. It's really simple. There are many times that a lot of people try to complicate the gospel. The gospel is very simple. Read it for yourself. If you don't own a Bible, that's all right too. Go on to Google, my best friend. Type in John 3, 16. And you will see what it says from the Bible. For God so loved you and I. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's that simple. And then we go to the book of Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. And it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in thine heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. We believe by repenting of those sins. That you shall be saved. Yes. Because anyone that seriously wants to be saved. Repents of their sins. Confesses Jesus as Lord. And receives him by faith into their hearts. Is converted instantaneously. And it is now because of that conversion that you've allowed his spirit that now pushes you to get to the watery grave of baptism where you will be baptized into him. The Bible says we're baptized into Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And then that same spirit that inhabited your heart after baptism is going to push you into discipleship where you will learn more about him. It's something that looks very simple, but it is not. It is a work of the spirit where men are instantaneously transported out of darkness and into God's marvelous light. And tonight in closing, we didn't want to scare you. We wanted to bring the book of Revelation to you to know that after this day, that there is more to come. This world is going to come to stand in the judgment of Christ. And we don't want you to be found weighed in the balances and found wanting. We want you to be saved. And if you're here tonight and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if you're here tonight and you want to give your life to him, it's real easy. I'm not here to ask you to sow a seed or to send me a cash app or a cell. I am here simply asking you, would you please give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ tonight? Would you join me in securing your eternal salvation? 
Can you open up your heart to the Lord tonight and make your calling and your election sure? You're listening to me right now. You might have tried drugs and alcohol. You might have tried revelry, partying. You may be in a situation right now where you just want to give up. You have no hope in your life. I urge you to come to Jesus. I urge you to give your life to him. Give your heart to him. I dare you and double dare you to come and ask him to come into your heart and see what he does. I mean, if he doesn't work out for you, hey, you have choice, right? But I can tell you he's worked out for me. He saved me from so much. He's my Lord and my King. He constantly protects and provides for me. He keeps me. When I'm lonely, he is always there. He gives me the peace that surpasses all understanding, the peace that I cannot find with any other person. And I tell you, falling in love with him is the best thing I've ever done. Yeah? The songwriter says, in his arms, I feel totally protected. In his arms, never disconnected. Hallelujah. There's no place I'd rather be. So I want to give you that invitation to come to him tonight. You're listening to me on YouTube. You're listening to me on TikTok and Facebook. And you don't know him as Savior. I want you to say this prayer as you sincerely repent. And repenting means to turn away from and not return. Can you join me tonight? Open up your heart's door and allow him to come in. Say, Almighty God, I come to you in Jesus' name, confessing that I am a sinner. As I repent of thus those sins, I make the declaration that I believe that Jesus died for my sins. And I believe his blood cleanses me from all unrighteousness. Lord, please save me. Come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life, Jesus. Make me into a new creature. I submit my will and my authority to you and accept you as Lord and King and Savior over my life. I receive the gift of salvation with joy and with faith believing that I am saved. In your precious name, Jesus, amen. We believe that if you said that prayer in all sincerity and believe by faith, receiving him into your heart, you've allowed him access into your heart. From here on out, he will lead you into a Bible-believing church. We are R-L-O-M, Regenerating Lives Outreach Ministry. We are located at 3253 Salem Road in Covington, Georgia. If you're in our neck of the woods, we would be happy to receive you on any given Sunday. Please come and join us. We will be happy to lead you even further into your walk with God. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to take this time out. Amen to thank each and every one of you, amen, that has joined us on these various platforms tonight. We bless God for you. We know that we can't do a broadcast without you. And in closing, I ask that you share the broadcast. If you have not yet subscribed to our channels, I ask that you would do so in the hopes of knowing and uh, following us as we come on with our broadcast on any given day of the week. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Um, and so uh, with a humble heart, we thank God for you being with us tonight. We don't take it for granted because you could have been listening to millions. Did I say millions of other people? Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Millions of other people you could have been tuned into, but you chose to be with us. So tonight we bless God for you and we leave you. Amen with the grace of God. And now 
may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, the Father, the full fellowship and communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, remain, and abide with us all, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for coming and being a part of us, and we bless you tonight in Jesus' name. Join me tomorrow night on our TikTok platform as we're doing one of our first, uh, well, actually the first broadcast that we will be having on TikTok live of uh, uh, Wellness Wednesdays. I will be there with my mentee, my brother, my friend, amen, uh, doctor. He's very familiar to some of us, but I'll introduce him tonight on my TikTok platform. Tomorrow night, sorry, at 7 o'clock on my TikTok platform, amen, at 7 as we talk about wellness uh, from a mental health perspective. We'll be covering quite a bit of topics, amen. We'll be there for about an hour and a half and every Wednesday um, as we try to minister to the TikTok platform. Please join me at Sparkle Glam 12 at the at sign Sparkle glam 12 and if you have not yet subscribed to my tiktok channel please join me and let's reach our family over there on tiktok amen we want to make sure that we get the message of salvation and all that we're doing amen god bless you pastor angler uh bless you bless you um we love the family at soul winners amen pentecostal church in pennsylvania and we love you and we send greetings Amen. Thank you to each and every one of you for joining. Until then, so long and God bless. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you.